Hey there, hey there, precious people of God. Welcome back to I Finish Strong page and um, the faith and mental health uh, class. We've been talking about many scriptures and applying them to our lives, pulling out what would be the emotional facets within the word of God, aligning it with what does life look like today and pulling some nuggets out in order for us to use some proven tools that helps us to move forward. Now I have a special, special thing I want to share today. So the Lord woke me up about 2 a.m. and the angel just whispered about 2 a.m. this morning in my ear, Genesis 32, Genesis 32, Genesis 32, Genesis 32. I'm going to bless you. Can I have a turn? Give me a turn. Give me a turn. And I woke up at two o'clock this morning and I was writing down Genesis 32, Genesis 32, Genesis 32. Give me my turn. Give me my turn. And you know what I'd like to share with you today? That it's God's turn. It's his turn. You know what that translates to me is there's many things that we have in and of ourselves worked really hard to try to make work, right? We've been like an old dug well where you got to pump the water out. We've been pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and trying to make things come together, make things work so that we can be blessed, look back blessed, perceived to be a certain way so that onlookers can say, oh, look and see how great they are. And God says, can I have a turn? It give me my turn. I want an opportunity to work in your life. You've done everything you could do to try to get these things to work. He took me to Genesis 32. I had to wake up and read it. Genesis 32 tells a story about Jacob and Laban. And Jacob, whose name means surplanter, which is the trickster, he's done so many different things to get ahead. He's done so many different things to try to get the favor of God or the blessing of the Father. And he's tricked this person and tricked that person and done so many things that it destroyed relationships. It began to mess up the dynamics um, as the dynamics of his life as he walked through his life. And God is saying, give me my turn. What we notice, if I can just kind of skip to the end here, what we notice is that this story about Jacob is about reconciliation. God says, give me my turn. Give it's my turn. Allow me to help you reconcile these relationships relationships. Allow me to help you to make things better and make things right. We see in the 32nd verse that Jacob is trying to prepare a meeting with his brother in order to um, come back and rebuild relationship. This is a story about reconciliation, forgiveness, when things gone wrong, restoration. This is your time for restoration. This is your time to go after the things that you wanted, the things that you desired. This is your time to see God move. He said, give me my turn. How do I translate that into actionable items? Well, take your hands off of it. Whatever you're doing, Meddling, sending text messages, emails, phone calls, nagging people, trying to hear me, hear me, hear me. This is my point of view. This is what I meant to say. Let me clear this up. Zip the lip, hands up, come out. I surrender, God, whatever you want to do on this situation. As you lead me and as you guide me, I will follow your leading hands out come out with your hands up no longer are you trying to make things become what you think there ought to be this is a time where you get to witness the power of god 
And believe me, God can do this without you. Many of the things have gone awry because we've had our fingers in there. We've been doing little things. We've been trying to make them see me. I want to be this and I want, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to go over here. And I'm, no, too many things. Be still and know that I am God. This is the word of the Lord. Be still, quiet your mind, quiet your activity, be present with my purpose. Be present with my plan. Have your ear to the ground so that you can hear my direction. I'm calling you into a greater place and you cannot go into that greater place carrying the baggage of yesterday. So in this metamorphosis, you will shed off unnecessary baggage. You will drop off different things. You're going to be like the airline. Certain airlines, they allow you to have two, uh, one check bag and two carry-ons. And some people walk up and they got a bag on this shoulder and a bag on that shoulder, two suitcases, a big suitcase. And they said, well, you only get two and the one. And if you want an extra, you're going to pay for it. Can I tell you that in this season, if you're not shredding, shedding the dead weight off, it's going to be too heavy. You're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it in your mental health, being unstable and unwell. You're going to pay for it in your physical health, being stressed and unhealthy. You're going to pay for it in your relationships, being taxed because you're too emotionally driven that they can't afford, afford to be in contact with you. And so it behooves you today to shed the weight. It behooves you today to hold on to God until you see this blessing comes forth, come forth. What do I mean by hold on to God? Well, if we, if we go back to that Genesis 32, you look at 32 and let's say 26, Jacob has an encounter with an angel, which are messengers of God that come to relay God's doing his work. The angel of God comes to Jacob and they wrestle. They, Jacob would not let go of this angel because he knew the blessing was attached to the message that was coming to me. The angel was saying, let me go, let me go. Jacob said, I'm not gonna let go until I see this blessing. I'm no longer holding on to the worldly things that I thought I needed. I'm no longer tricking and, and trying my best to get over. I'm holding on to the promises that God has for me. And I'm not going to let go until I see this change. I'm not going to let go until I see my relationships reestablished, rebuilt better. I'm not going to let go until I see my financial situation come to where I need it to be. I'm not going to let go until I see this promise of the blessing in my life. God says, give me my turn. You've already tried it. You've done everything you can possibly do. You've tricked every way you can possibly trick. You've set things up and you've moved things here and you move things there. And now. God says, give me my turn. In that encounter with an angel, God changed his name. So you're no longer going to be Jacob. You're going to be Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with man. Yeah. This is your opportunity. If you're trying to work things out on your own accord, you got to let that go and you got to hold on to what God has for you.
And as you hold on to what God has for you, he begins to work things out for your good. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good of them who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Now get this. It may not feel good. It didn't feel good as he was wrestling with the angel. It didn't feel good when the, when the angel hit the hip of his socket and he was in a left with a limp. It didn't feel good, but it was worth the battle because I got to walk in my blessing and I got to see the power of God show up in my life. Not only power with God, but he also gave me power with the end. So let me encourage you, let go of the world systems, let go of whatever you're trying to in your own flesh to achieve. Turn toward God, hold on to God, allow him to minister to you and don't you give up until you see the blessing come to pass in Jesus name. Looking for great things to happen in your life. I'm Dr. Sandra Stubbs. This is I Finish Strong, Faith and Mental Health. Love you, love you much. May God's light and his abundance shine upon you in the name of Jesus.